Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited to talk with our guest today. He's got quite an interesting story and knows a lot of interesting people. But, 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 but before we introduce our guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Six Sigma, ScottTodd.net landmodo.com and most importantly if not automating your craigslist and your facebook postings posting domination.com forward slash the land geek scott todd how are you mark i'm great how are you i'm great i'm great are you ready to grill our guest today i am i am i i am i'm really excited you know what's funny though is like um i've noticed that i've only had one cup of coffee this morning and i'm less irritable so it's like maybe i'll be nicer on this podcast I don't think you're ever mean, though. I don't think you're ever I'm mean. Not really, I'm not really I shouldn't have said like, that. There's like, like, there's, like the, there's like that little, like, you know, like that little twinge of, of like caffeinate, caffeinated irritation sometimes. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? I, I know what you're saying. All right. Let's talk to Colin Morgan from dailygrindpodcast.com. You don't know who Colin is. He found himself uh, a couple years ago in the Daily Grind. He felt unfulfilled and he wasn't making the money he wanted. And so he leaves his job at the time and goes out on his own. He stumbles around and he finds someone who could show him the way. And he thought that was kind of important. And now he has a purpose and he looks forward every day with renewed enthusiasm. He has great relationships. He's growing his business and he has an insatiable appetite for learning. And that's why he developed the Daily Grind podcast to help people who are just like him. His podcast airs five days a week and features some of the world's most fascinating people. His guests included John Lee Dumas, Kyle Wilson, Rod Cleef, Aaron Walker, David Mead, Simon Sinek's business partner, Noah Kagan, and Walter O'Brien, just to name a few. Colin Morgan, how are you? Mark, Scott, excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Oh, I do. I do. Also, we'll just remind everybody today's podcast is sponsored by tlfolio.com don't sit there without any money sell 12 to 18 months of the cash flow of your note reinvest in other deals learn more at tlfolio.com so colin um tell us let's just rewind the tape a bit tell us a little bit about being caught in the daily grind like what was your daily grind like how bad was it you know what um it wasn't as bad as most people. I, I think everyone's story is, everyone has a bad story. But for me, I was a professional golfer before I was in the daily grind. So I was doing something that I loved, but I wasn't quite able to get to the point where I was on the PGA Tour making the money. I was stuck in the, in the golf grind, so to speak. So I moved out of that. I got into the business world. I tried a lot of things myself. I tried an e-commerce site. I was uh, in the in the used car industry for a little bit, almost up and opened up a used car dealership. And then I kind of just went from job to job for a little bit. And I was, you know, unfulfilled. I was tired with what I was doing. I knew there was something more, but I was at a point where I just need to make some money. And, um, for me, it came to a point where it was, am I going to do something for the rest of my life that I'm unhappy with just to make some money or, do I want to make a real impact and do I want to make a real impact on the people that I want to make an impact on? So that got me to a point of where I am right now. And, uh, I'm still learning, I'm still getting better. I'm still improving, but I am happy to say that I'm able to sit here. The sun's beating down on my face. I'm looking over after a nice snowy Tuesday here in Canada and I'm loving what I do. I love it. I love it. Um, what was a dark period in your life that you went through and, and how did you come out of it and, and what did you learn from it? You know what? Um, there was a point in time where I was in my early adult life and I had met someone who had a big influence over me and it was a very toxic relationship and uh, an abuse issue happened out of it. And it took me a real long time to recover from it, to be honest. I was in a dark place, didn't know what I wanted to do. I woke up unhappy. I was waking up at 1 p.m., which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to when they're younger, right? Just because you don't really know what you're doing. 
And it took me a real long time to be able to not get over that, but learn to deal with it. And what helped was finding people who were in a similar situation to what I was in and speaking to professionals and learning how to overcome issues and deal with issues and how to turn those negatives into positives. And once I really learned that um, I couldn't necessarily, I had always had this attitude, Mark and, and Scott, I don't know if you've had this of, you know, why me, you know, when something happens to you, you're like, why me? And it wasn't until someone kind of flipped the switch on me and said, you know, Colin, why not you? Um, obviously you have the tools in order to overcome this issue and you just need to start using them. And once I made that switch in my mindset and I understand, and I kind of followed that principle of why not me, I really started to make a positive change. I started to get over a lot of the issues that I had. I stopped fe feeling sorry for myself. And um, I really want, went on a self-improvement binge, which really took me from a place of where I was really down and had, had no vision, nowhere to go to where I am today. So I could definitely say that it was a, it was a dark period in my life, but what got me through it was people. And uh, I continue to lean on people to this day. Scott Todd. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, like, I, I'm smiling because like, I remember having similar thoughts. Like I, I would say like, uh, I would see someone who's successful and I'm like, uh, man, why can't I get that success? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, uh, look at them. They're, they're lucky or so I must be doing something wrong. And like, yeah, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was doing something wrong. Right. Like, yeah. there's no doubt, you know, like, and even today, you, you know, I still, I still say, like, I see something, I'm like, man, I must be doing something wrong. And I am. And here's what I'm doing wrong is I may not be going after it the same way that that person did. You know, it's so easy to look at you or to me or to Mark and say, oh man, they got it easy, but there's no, there's no easiness to it. It's, it's kind of like embracing the grind, powering through it and kind of asking that question. I like you, what you said there, which was like, why can't I do this? And I'll yeah. tell you that, when I started my land investing business and I was looking at other people who were, who were successful or talking about success, success, I'd be like, man, if they can do it, I know I can do it. So the minute I had that, that positive self confidence and I'm like, again, in the hardest times, if they could do it, I can do it. Why can't, no, 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 I'm going to do this. And the minute that you start to get that it builds your self confidence and man, you're like unstoppable. Yeah, absolutely. And building on that, like, you know, you st I still go through that. I still go through issues every single day of, of doubt and looking at where other people are and wishing I was there and wishing that the growth that I'm having is would be more rapid. But it's just that concept. It's having that vision in place of what you want out of life. And then the way I look at life is a success ladder with an infinite number of steps. I always say it and all I'm trying to do every day is take one step up on that success ladder. And yeah, there's going to be days which I go backwards. There's going to be days which I skip a few steps, but I have that vision in place and that allows me to get up, keep pushing forward and keep improving. Yeah. I mean, you know, just to, to build on what you're saying and what Scott was saying is about, you know, why is someone more successful than me or, you know, comparison is sort of the thief of happiness and the truth of the matter is there's like, you know, success porn in this country. Like you read Fortune mm -hmm. Magazine or, or Inc. 500 and you hear about the latest billionaire that, you know, created an app or, you know, invested in, in Bitcoin when it was, a, you know, three cents or whatever it is. But no one talks about the mind numbing, you know, arduous hours and, you know, heartache of, you know, the ups and downs of what they had to go through to even get any success, right? And the risks they had to take. It's just like, oh, look, they just flipped the switch and now they're successful. So Colin, when, when you hear the word successful, what do you think of? I think of fulfillment. And I think that success is defined differently in, in every person. But for me, I look at success as, is one freedom. It's the freedom to do what I want when I want because I want to do it. And it's just to feel fulfilled in my life, to know that I have not only a great business, but my relationships are strong. I have great friends. I'm able to speak with people like Mark and Scott here on the podcast today. Like that is what I see success as, is being able to have that freedom to do what you want. And a part of that is money, but money is just a part of it. Like that's what I really want people to know. Like success, yeah, it has to do with money, but I think people idolize money too much. 
I look at the most successful people in the world and they have freedom and they have fulfillment in their life. And that's what I continue to, to strive for. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Um, when you first started the daily grind podcast, what, uh, what were some of your biggest challenges just as an entrepreneur? Yeah, I think your biggest challenge is like, I think in anything is going to be yourself. Like, I think I had a lot of self doubt. Um, I didn't really know I was going to reach out to people like yourself. I didn't really know how receptive I was going to be. I was very raw into the podcasting world. I was introduced through it actually through John Lee Dumas, who does entrepreneur on fire. And he kind of sparked my podcast start. Um, so I owe a lot of credit to him, but a lot of the doubts and, and things I struggled with early on were my own. And then kind of going through it, it's like, hey, now I've committed to a five day a week show. Like, how do I start allocating time properly to not only do this podcast, but to make sure that um, the business that I have here with my father is still going to make money and the marketing side of it, it's going to be strong and we're still going to be able to generate sales. So I had to learn in the mornings to really set myself up and even go further than that. Now I do it kind of more at night, setting myself up for the next day. But really time management is really what I still struggle with, but I'm getting a lot better at. But it's those two things. It was time management for me. And then it was myself. It was getting over my own insecurities, my own self doubts and self beliefs. And I had to start incorporating, you know, what I call winning behaviors into my life. And once I did that, I was able to start doing it. But like, I want to tell everyone, like I still struggle with it to this day, but I continue to, to try to get better. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I, I think, uh, I think, I think that when you have an over aggressive kind of goal, you know, you said a podcast five, five days a week. I mean, I think that, I think that when it's, when it sometimes seems like too much, it's probably a good thing because yeah. then, you know, like, um, yeah, you, like a grand Cardone would tell you like, no one wakes up for small goals, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, small, small goals are boring. And I, I do agree. Like we, when we go to set goals, a lot of times we want to be safe, right? Like, I remember, I remember when I had my corporate job and they'd be like, okay, set your 2000, uh, you know, 17 goals or 2018 goals. And man, there's no way in heck that you really want to write some crazy goal up there because then they'd be like, you, well, you didn't achieve it. Well, no, duh, I didn't achieve it because it was big. Okay. So you, you, you go safe and, oh, I can, I can do that. I can, I can yeah. achieve that without really. And they always love to say like, it needs to be a stretch goal. Yeah. Okay. So if you really wanted me to put down a stretch goal, I would, the, the goal would be 10 times what it, what you're asking me to do. And then there would be no consequences if I come up short. Right. You know, like, but in the world, in the real world, there's consequences for not achieving your goals, unless it's your own personal goal. Right? Like you said, five days a week yeah. podcast or whatever it is, go big man. And, and then get excited about it. Yeah. You know what? It's exactly right. And when I started it, I was like, Oh, maybe I'll do one day a week but it didn't get me up, right? Like I, I know myself and I know that I need to keep motivated with something. And on a one day a week show, it wouldn't have been as good. I would have slacked off probably in about a few months, you know, just, just knowing who I am, I probably would have stopped. So I had to really commit to doing it. And it really, once you set that intention and you put it out there for the world, like this is what I'm doing, it's very powerful. Um, and it forces you to continue to grow and building on kind of like the goal setting. Cause I'm, I'm a, like, it's, what is it? January, what are we? 16th, January 16th. Yeah. So people are a couple of weeks into their new year's resolutions and um, for 50% of them, it's probably over um, for the other 50% good for you. But I think it, the, one of the biggest problems with new year's resolutions is people are setting goals one, because they think that that's what they need to do. Um, they set a lot of goals. Like I, the most common ones I'm sure you hear is like, I want to get in shape or I have to start going to the gym. And one thing that I always tell people with that is like, you have to go deeper than that. And an exercise that I like to go through when I'm setting something is like, I'll ask myself why multiple times. So why do I want to go to the gym? Well, because I feel overweight. Well, why do you feel overweight? Because when I look online and I see people who are in shape and it makes me ashamed of myself, well, why do you want to do that? And a lot of times the final question will be what that deep rooted issue is. And for a lot of people, it may be, I, I want to feel energized when I wake up. I'm sick of not feeling good about myself. I want to spend more time with my kids and be more energized. 
And once you have that goal in place, then just working out and going to the gym just becomes a part of that, right? It becomes a part of that bigger overarching goal. So I think when you kind of go through that process of setting goals, you're really going to find what that deep issue is and you'll be able to attack it. Yeah, I love that. I, I love that that why exercise and um, and oftentimes like we'll talk about this at boot camps, guy. I mean, not, not necessarily the 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 you know the why issues, but we kind of you know sort of allude to it. It's like why do you want to make you know million dollars a year? Well, I don't want to not you know I want to have freedom and flexibility, but you know, and then it kind of gets done. Like, like I mean, it's always about freedom, right? Well, you don't need a million dollars a year to to be free right? Once your passive income exceeds your fixed expenses, you're working when you want, where you want, with whom you want, you're, you're free. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's really an interesting way to sort of, uh, to, to think about things that on the surface just seem so in, simple, but when you get, go, you, know, you know, you peel the onion, it's like, oh, this is the core value that I really want to achieve. More freedom, more flexibility, more energy, uh, better, deeper relationships, right? Uh, exactly. Peace of mind, less anxiety, right? Those types of things. Uh, so, Colin, this is a favorite question I like to ask, especially, I don't know why, Scott, why do I like asking Canadians this question so much? It seems like it's, <laughs> if you're a Canadian, you get, you get the dinner question. Is it, okay. is it cold in there? Uh, is is that it your poutine? Question? Is it cold? Maybe it's because maybe of the poutine. Like, okay, you're going to serve poutine. Okay. To... <laughs> Three people, three of their favorite podcast guests that you've had on the dailygrindpodcast.com. What three people would you invite to dinner? And what one question would you ask them? And how do you think they would answer that question? It's a tough question. Well, it's a tough question. So, so do you want me to include you on this or, or go with three others? You don't have to. I mean, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you can, you can include me. If, if you don't have me for dinner, you don't have to though. <laughs> I, mean, right. I personally would rather talk to Noah Kagan than me. Yeah. You know what? Um, three people that had on the show, uh, excluding say yourself and my father. Um, sure. I'll go with Aaron Walker. Okay. I think Aaron, I had a fascinating, uh, talk with Aaron Walker. I mean, all my guests, I mean, if, if any guest is listening and I don't include you in this, you know, don't be heart, don't be you know heartbroken because I'd probably include you if he asked it again. But this is right, right now, so I'd go with Aaron Walker. Um, probably uh, a guest that I had on today was very interesting. His name was Spencer Thompson. Okay. And uh, probably Dr. Alex Mayer would be the three. Dr. Um, Alex Mayer. Yeah. Um, I think one of the biggest things with, with those three people is they all have a very unique way of looking at life. Um, I'm more fascinated with, with human development than I am looking at, you know, people who make millions of dollars, even though, like I said, that's important, but to me, that's what it is. And I would just ask them <clears throat> probably like one of the things I ask on the show is if they could go back in time and offer yourself one piece of advice I would tell them kind of where I am right now. And I would ask them like, what should I be, what should be my number one focus? And the reason for that being is that what I think my number one focus should be may not be right. And hearing it from people who are more successful than, than me and who I look up to as mentors, I think having that in place and being them being able to tell me what they think I should do far succeeds uh what i think i should do so i think those three people right there aaron walker uh spencer thompson and and dr alex Mayer. um but like i said to all the other guests i'm sure it would change if, if you asked me it again tomorrow what, what do you think they would say how do you think they'd answer that question i think they'd have to get some context in terms of where i want to get to um which i think that after speaking with them personally like that's what their real thing is like they really want to get down to what the issue is and being able to do it i think they would tell me to just like have your own set of principles in place and information which you're taking and learning attribute those like a lot of information which you read out of books or which you listen to from podcasts or you get from webinars they're a lot different and if they don't align with what your principles set of principles are 
then uh, don't waste your time with them. Waste your time with things that you believe in and have a vision and trust the process. I love it. I love it. Have you read Ray, Ray Dalio's uh, principles book yet? I certainly, I say it was my last book that I read. That's why I brought that up. <laughs> what did you think? what did you think of it? I think he's brilliant. I, I really enjoy the way he looks at life. I mean, he's one of the most brilliant investors of all time. He has the most successful hedge fund. And uh, anytime you get to learn from someone like that, amazing. But his bit, his principles on life and business are very interesting. Yeah. I, I, I love the idea of, you know, radical transparency radical mm. open-mindedness and radical honesty. Um, Scott Todd, any thoughts? I, I do like the idea of uh, like talking to people who are more successful than you, you know, like that whole concept of, of uh, you know, you're, you are the average of the five people you hang around with or socialize with or talk to. Um, I think that a lot of times it's easy to hang out with people who are maybe lower than you or at the same level as you in whatever you're trying to achieve versus, you know, trying to spend time with somebody who is higher because um, I think it takes a lot of self-confidence to, to really hang out with people who are maybe where you want to be or ahead of you because yeah. there's always that self-doubt that, that can creep in. So, you know, as long as you can kind of do that, then hang out with them, learn from them and figure out, you know, it's one thing to go to them and say, Hey, you know, let's hang out and let's go to lunch. It's another thing to try to understand like how you can add value to their, to, to what they're trying to achieve. Right. You know, cause if you can add value to them and what they're trying to achieve, well, man, you're helping to solve a pain point for them. You're, you're going to be included in that circle just because of the value that you, you can bring. Absolutely. And that's the number one thing that I've learned is, is exactly that. If you do go for lunch to someone, you do speak to these people, like really try to do your homework, first of all. But then when you're there, like try to see what they need help with. And if you can help them, then just kind of go, just do it for them. Don't ask for anything in return. Don't ask for money for a service. Like just go ahead and help them and you'll see that it's going to come back to you tenfold. Yeah, I think that's really I mean, great advice. <laughs> Mark, so someone contacted me recently and they're like, uh, Hey, I appreciate like, um, you know, you know, like I, I'm, I'm learning from you. I'm like, Oh, that's awesome. Great. And they're like, um, what do you need help with? Right? Like right. they, they tried to apply the same logic, but it, like, I don't, I don't necessarily always know what I need help with that. I could just say to you, like, here, you can help me do this. Yeah. But, but like may, maybe if you like, like you said, do your homework, figure out how you can add value to them and suggest that or propose it because it may not be an exact fit, but at least it's something to start working with as opposed to, Hey, how, how can I help you? Well, I don't know how you can help me. Yeah. Right. Love it. Right. Well, we're at that point now in the podcast where we get to put you on a spot column and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. I think your mentorship has been phenomenal the last, you know, 25 minutes, but now, we want one more piece of Colin wisdom. What do you got? Yeah. You know what? I think that, uh, I think I always say that certainty is a recipe for stagnation. And I think to anyone listening today is really look at what you view and like what you think is, is certain in your life and question it. Um, because you don't want to be certain about anything. When you're certain about something, it will stagnate you. You're not going to be able to grow and develop as a person, develop in business you know, increase those relationships, which you really value. So that would be my biggest tip to anybody. And I really thought about it because I wanted it to be, you know, a powerful message and not just, you know, read a book or whatever like that. I think that really don't be certain about anything. Really look at every picture, every different side, and that will lead to the decisions that you make. Um, a great book, like I said, I, I would say that uh, it's Ray Dalio's Principles. Fantastic book. Um, also big into habits, uh, big into journaling. Um, I think that the Freedom Journal from John Lee Dumas is a great little resource for people to use to wake up, be able to set yourself up for the day, write down your goals, finish your day the right way. Um, so yeah, that's what I would leave you off with. I love it. Do you have a, do you have a morning routine? I do have a morning routine. I like to wake up and have a bulletproof coffee in the morning. Um, as as then, do I. 
<laughs> as do you. Yeah, I really enjoy that. And uh, I like to, first of all, like before, right when I wake up, I just look at where I am and I'm thankful for the things that I have and the position that I'm in. I think a lot of people overlook that. And like I said, they look at people online or over the internet and they see their success and they forget that their lives are great and uh, you'll eventually get there, but just be happy with who you are, what you have. That's how I like to start my day off. Then I go through a little bit of uh, planning throughout the day and then I just execute on the things that I need done. All right. Fantastic. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, this is going to sound strange, but uh, man, I've really, I really started using this, using this uh, one website, this free website for, uh, for some different things. And I'll kind of tell you it's the, the website first is randomwordgenerator.com. And basically it just gives you like, you can get, you can dial in like what you want the letter to start or the word to start with or end with or whatever. But you can go in there and you can create some like random words, which, okay, that's kind of cool. But here's, here's what I've been doing. I've been using this website because if you scroll down a little bit, you can do a random noun, verb, name. That's what I've been using, the name, random name generator for uh, different uh, Craigslist accounts. So random name oh. generator. Uh, see, like, you, you know, because sometimes it's like, man, what, what do I want this account to be? I like, I like to use names. Well, here's another one, random passwords. Okay, I, I kind of have my passwords down. Acts of random kindness. I so, just clicked on that. I love that. <laughs> mine right now says open the door for someone, right? So if, you, if you're trying to like, I don't know, maybe I should say this one for Mike Zano because, you know, he's always saying I'm not compassionate. Here's a great <laughs> way of, of coming and finding ways that you can add compassion or kindness into someone's life. I just, I just clicked on five. I was like, make a hot beverage for a friend or family. Okay. Make someone a cup of coffee. Easy. Purchase ethical goods. Neighbors law looking messy. Offer to mow it. Make an effort to get to know someone you don't usually talk to. Pretty cool. Who, who will be making dinner for your family tonight? Tag your it. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I, yeah. Uber Eats, Postmates. <laughs> Panera Bread's getting delivered, kids. All right. Yep. I love hazing Scott about Panera Bread, Colin. Even though he, <laughs> even though he's, he, he swears up and down, he, he rarely goes there anymore. Can't do it, eh, Scott? Uh, I mean, like, I used to see, the problem is I used to go, like, almost daily for lunch, mm. right? Because it was, like, where we went. But uh, we don't go there as much anymore. So, you know, I still get the, I still get the harassment from a couple years ago. Yeah. That's it. It's always fun. It's all on good fun. Well, my tip of the week is start getting daily mentorship five days a week at daily grind podcast.com. You had me on the podcast, which means, you know, you know, it's going to be amazing, right? <laughs> I was on there, John Lee Dumas, Noah Kagan. So you're talking about, you know, very accomplished people. I don't know. Did I mention I was on there? The same podcast as those guys? So, no, I'm just kidding. But, uh, no, it's great. It's great. And Colin's a great interviewer. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's phenomenal to be able to kind of get, um, you know, that, that sort of insight into these very successful, interesting people within, you know, a 25, 30-minute podcast. So, check it out. Dailygrindpodcast.com. Colin Morgan, are we good? We're good, Mark. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on here. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right, you gonna, you going to run a first watch, get the usual? No, I'm good, thank you. You're good, okay. See, Colin, see how I roll? Okay. I want to thank yeah. the listeners. I want to just remind them to do us three favors. The only way we're going to get the quality of guests like Colin Morgan at dailygrindpodcast.com. You can come on the podcast. You've got to subscribe. You got to rate, you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the passive uh, income launch kit, a $97 program. So please do that. Also, again, today's podcast is sponsored by tlfolio.com. Need money? Sell your note, tlfolio.com. Uh, and then I just want to thank everybody for spending time with us on, uh, on, on the podcast. We really appreciate it. And um, it's going to be a great 2018. So thanks again. 
and uh, we'll see everybody next time. Let freedom ring. ring. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.